Hi guys and welcome to the first episode of a new series that is focused on oil filters. Some of you are maybe wondering why I'm speaking in English, as previous episodes were made in Romanian. Well, as the products we'll be testing today are available worldwide, I believe that switching to English will be more beneficial for as many people as possible. Today I would like to present you a comparison between two brands that are well known for their filtration products and to be more precise I'm talking about MAN and Knecht. Firstly I would like to start with a little overview on what is the role of an oil filter, the types of oil filters that are used and after that we will continue with the tests and presentation of the products that I've mentioned. Let's begin! An oil filter has multiple roles in providing optimal lubrication of the engine. One of them, of course, is the filtration of the oil from metal particles or sludge and on some filters even water. Another role of the filter is to maintain a sufficient oil flow to the engine. For example, an oil filter can be created to clean the oil from more than 99% of the particles that are 1 micrometer or larger. But this would require the use of thicker filter paper which lowers the flow. Therefore, a careful balance must be achieved in order to have a suitable flow and also provide good filtration. On most modern cars, there are two types of oil filters being generally used with a few exceptions. One is a spin-on filter which was developed in the 1950s and is a self-contained metal housing and an element assembly inside which needs to be screwed in place somewhere accessible on the engine. The advantages of this type are that they are producing less mess when replacing and do not need a special housing in which to be placed. The disadvantages are that they are harder to recycle and cost more to produce and this is the reason why more and more manufacturers are switching to the second type of oil filters, the cartridge filter, which we'll be testing today. The filters are much cheaper to produce as they are basically just a filter element with a plastic core and are easier to recycle but are arguably messier to discard of as oil whips out of them. The paper element inside the filter serves the most important role and this can be made out of three materials. The most common is cellulose. These are easier to produce but can have larger gaps between the fibers through which particles can escape. The second material used is glass fibers. These are more expensive but the gaps are more consistent and smaller in size. Usually the glass fiber filters are more effective than cellulose filters. The third type is a combination of both and are known as composite filters. As mentioned, the filters that we'll be testing today are cartridge filters based on a cellulose construction. When choosing an oil filter, some aspects are more important than others. Pore size, flow rate or particle retention capacity needs to be considered if you wish to purchase a good filter. Unfortunately, the filter manufacturers do not always disclose this information. This being said, I believe that this test performed in this episode will make it easier when deciding what brand to choose, because these two were always considered to be high quality. First, we'll take a look at the filter design and construction. Let's start with MAN. If you ever wondered why do most filters have this folded paper design, this is to increase the surface area of the filter helping in capturing more contaminants from the oil while preserving the oil flow. We'll take a look at these aspects in a few moments. The paper in this filter, which is also called the media, is held together at the ends by the soft material that is most likely hot pressed in place, with the paper glued in place with this blue adhesive. I have no way to know, but it's possible that this approach was considered in order to speed up the production process. One downside of this is that the end caps of the filter are also pressed between the folds and thus the filter loses some of its surface area. We will measure that in this episode. Now let's dissect this filter and see what's inside. Hmm, <laughs> don't try this. We need to keep in mind that the oil flow through these filters is made from the outside to the inside. The construction of these filters seems very robust and the plastic core is high quality, just as the o-rings that are included. We can see that between the filter media and the middle passage the manufacturer designed these spiral fins that help to channel the oil in a circular direction and in this way the particles that may escape can get caught in the filter.
Moving to the next candidate, the Knecht filter has a different structure approach. The end caps are made out of a harder material that is similar to plastic reinforced paper, which is hard to cut or break. These caps are not pressed between the folds like the filter produced by MAN, thus giving a larger surface area. The paper bond in this one is glued together with a transparent adhesive. Let's slice it in half and see what's inside. At first look, it looks identical to its counterpart, but on the Knecht filter, the fin design is different. This is not arranged in a spiral, but rather a brick layout, which ultimately serves the same purpose. Let's continue with the measurements performed on these filters. Starting with the MAN, I've counted 156 folds and the dimension of one fold is 8.2 by 1.6 cm, which give it a surface area of 2046.72 square centimeters. The paper thickness is 0.62 mm. Now for the connect. I've counted 120 folds, which is less than MAN, but the dimension of one fold is 8.9 by 1.6 cm, larger than MAN because of the cap design. The total surface area measure of the Knec filter is 1708.8 square cm, which is less than the MAN, but the paper thickness is 0.85 mm which is 0.23 mm thicker than MAN. This would mean that the Knecht filter would be better at trapping the particles in the media, but we can presume that the flow would be affected and vice versa for the MAN. We'll see the flow performance in the next test. In order to test the oil flow, we'll do a short experiment using a paper sample from each filter. The sample will be tied at the end of a funnel and 100 mm of oil will be poured in it. The oil used is new and is 5W30 and was heated to exactly 100 degrees Celsius. The timer will start when the oil reaches the blue spacer and will stop when the oil level goes under the spacer. It seems that the sample taken from Kinect is in the lead, despite being thicker. Nice! Well done Kinect! We'll take a close-up look at the fiber structure in a few minutes. At first I thought that it might be interesting to see how do they perform with cold oil. So I left a sample of oil in the freezer when it went to minus 25 degrees and tried it. Okay, so it took 15 minutes to reach this point and by that time the oil got warmer and warmer until the test was not relevant anymore. So we'll stick with the hot oil for now. Next, I've built a contraption that simulates oil flow in the engine and oh boy, <laughs> this took a long time and a lot of tweaking in order to get it running properly. At first I tried it with a 12 volt electric pump which was trash. Don't ever buy something like that. Then I've tried it with a manual pump which didn't have the necessary flow and then I modified the genuine oil pump designed for Tracton engine, which finally worked well enough. The purpose of this was to recreate the oil cycle through the engine and add fine particles to the oil in order to examine how the filter catches these fine particles. The parameters that we'll be using will be the same for each product that we test. 200 liters of oil will be pumped through the filter. 
The pump RPM will be constant at 1300, but the flow will change depending on the filter used. Oil temperature will be kept constant at 50 degrees Celsius and an equal amount of particles will be added to the start of each test. The particles that I've chosen are made very precisely by gas atomizing molten metals. I went for a mixture of elements that are normally found in the engine, like iron, chrome and nickel. And the particle dimension of these are from 10 micrometers to 45 micrometers. You can see the powder here besides the Philips head. At first, I'll run the test with a sacrificial filter in order to clean the oil from any contaminants. We'll start with one after that. The filter is placed inside the housing and the oil is poured in the tank, which is just a glass bottle. Inside the tank we have an electric heater and a temperature sensor that keeps the oil warm. The oil is pulled into the filter, after which it continues down through the flow meter and then it reaches the pump, where it's pushed back into the tank and the cycle continues. In real life, the oil flow to an engine ranges from approximately 20 liters a minute to over 40 liters a minute, so our test would simulate 10 minutes of engine idle. In order to analyze the retention capacity of the filters, 6.4 grams of metal powder are placed in the oil at the start of each test. Now it's time for Connect to go through the same treatment, after which we'll cut open the filters and see how they performed. Ok, so the test is over, let's take a look inside. First is MAN. As you can see, most of the powder is spread evenly on the side of the fold, but we'll take a closer look in just a moment, after we also take a look inside the connect filter. In this one, the spread of the powder is more cramped inside the fold. Let's switch the lens so we can see it closer. Now you can see how the particles joined together in some areas, also the cellulose fibers can be observed where it was cut. In order to see through the material, I had to shine a light through it. Just capturing the sample on video was not enough, therefore I decided to take a photo instead so we can have more details. Looking at the MAN sample first, we can see a lot of white areas between the fibers. As the media in this filter is thinner, there is a chance that smaller particles can pass through, although we can see some particles that have been caught inside. Now let's take a look at the CONNECT sample. Immediately we can see that there are less gaps between the fibers in this one, but we could already assume this because we knew that the media was thicker in this one. In conclusion, the smaller gaps and the thicker paper make the connect filter more efficient, despite having a smaller surface area. Taking into consideration that this one also did better in the flow test, from my point of view this makes it the winner of this episode. Tell me what you think about this test in the comment section below. If you liked it, leave a like and also consider subscribing. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook where I usually post updates on the upcoming episodes. Until then, thank you for watching, see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.